everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Come on, is there anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? We come to bless him. We come to lift him up and magnify his holy name. Come on, all over this building, let's rest on our feet. Let's stand all over this place. He inhabits the praises of his people, so we're going to praise him on tonight. We're going to lift him up. Lord, bring in your glory as we establish your place in this house. We want to see a great manifestation of you, O oh Lord. So we will seek your face till glory fill this place. Hallelujah. We want you to go ahead and join in with us with worship. Come on right here. Clap your hands like this. Everybody clap your hands. Bring in your glory. Bring 
thank you for another day, another hour, another opportunity to come before your throne of grace. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that you allowed us to see today. Father, we ask that you would bless this service right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Bless every soul that has come together to gather in your name, Father. Bless the man of God that will deliver the word, O oh God. Give him a man of word from on high for your people, O oh God. Let the word touch, heal, save, deliver, and set free, O oh God. Let the spirit come down, O oh God, and have its way on this service and over every person in here today. Holy Spirit, come in, have your way, take control, deal with us, O oh God. Be with us, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, and in your son's name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God praise tonight. Oh, no, no, that would have been great if it was for me. I said, give God praise tonight. If you need the glory of God to saturate your life, I want you to do me a favor and put a sound in this atmosphere. Come on, I said, if you believe and need the glory of God to saturate your life, I said, open up your mouth and give God a shout in this atmosphere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This kind of worship only works when we do it together. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. If you look up that word inhabit in the Hebrew, it literally means when we praise God and praise him right, that he sits in the sanctuary. If you need God to do something for you before you get home, I need you to give God a praise of expectation. <laughs> I said, I need you to give God a praise of expectation that tells the devil that you will not win this time. I will not leave TFC depressed. I will not leave TFC stressed out. I will not leave TFC trying to take my own life. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now I need you to shake the heavens and give God a shout like you're expecting him to move tonight. Praise him like you want to bless him. Shout like you know he's been good. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I believe that in this atmosphere, we will see miracles. I wish I had an expected church. I said, I believe in this atmosphere, we will see miracles, signs, and wonders. Your pastor's going to leave refreshed. Your first lady's going to leave refreshed. Your youth director, I feel the Holy Ghost. Your youth director's going to leave refreshed and revived. Somebody open up your mouth and... feel some move right there somebody came in here depressed uh, somebody came in here with uh, came in here with the weight of the world on your shoulder uh, somebody lift up your hands uh, and say Lord uh, restore unto me uh, the joy of my salvation I'm going back to my church on fire I'm going back to my church with more strategy. I'm going back to my church with more Holy Ghost. <laughs> Do me a favor, move out of your seat and just go shake three people's hand and say, I know he's all right. Uh, go ahead, shake three people's hand and tell them that. Shake three people's hand and say, I know he's all right. Come on, this is conference and revival. Tell him, I know he's all right. Tell him. Now look at somebody across the room and tell him he's all right on a Monday night. Woo! I know he's all right. Say yes. Man, I feel something in this atmosphere. You can get delivered in this atmosphere. You can be set. What time about my mind? You can be set free in this atmosphere. Glory to God. All right. 
All right. Come on, choir. I want you to come. Come on, choir. I want you to come tonight. Come on, choir. Come on, choir. Come on, come on, choir. Come on, choir. I want you to come. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. My, my, my. Just look at somebody and tell them, welcome to TFC. Welcome to TFC 2023. Now look at somebody on your row and tell them, if you're going to sit here, tell them, no, 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 tell them, if you're going to sit here, tell them, you got to praise them tonight. If you, I don't want no bumps on the log tonight. If, man, if you're going to sit here, you've got to praise them. You've got to bless them. Amen. We're trying to move as fast as we can. Amen. It's Monday night. We're moving through some kinks and things of that nature. But look at somebody and tell them, he's still good. Tell them he's still good. Amen. He's still good. Our choir is coming. Would y'all clap your hands for our Fellowship District Baptist Association Mass Choir. Amen. Amen. They're coming. Amen. With our evening hymn tonight. Amen. We're going to church after our choirs come. Amen. Our district director. Amen. Our Congress director is coming uh, to share with us and then we'll be out of your way. I want y'all to stand on your feet. Amen. We're going to church. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Come on. Stand all over the building for our evening hymn. church and Wednesday we will have media ministry and marketplace with Rochelle V. Mann of Kingdom Life Ministries. After the, the lecture series then you, will have then you will have the opportunity for workshop leaders. We had an amazing workshop today. Amen. 
With My Soul Says Yes by Bishop Coletta Vaughn, with Church Administration Gone Wild by Cindy Flowers, with I Love My Church by our own moderator, Pastor Johnson, and then Media, Ministry, and Marketplace by Reverend Nakia Pollard. Not, let's not forget to bring our youth every night so that they can be a part. They are our future. And so we want to make sure that from three up into teen ages that they are here so that they can have a shine and spotlight this Friday. And keep in mind that we have nightly worship that will begin every night at 8 p.m. Will you clap your hands for an amazing week that we're about to have? In Jesus' name. Would y'all give God praise for First Lady Patrina Caldwell? Amen. Amen. We're just blessing God uh, for what he has done, for what he is doing. Uh, and for what he's getting ready to do. How many of you believe that this week is going to be a life-changing week? If you believe that, give God praise for that. Thank you so much uh, to all of our delegates. Would you all clap your hands for our mass choir? Don't they look amazing tonight? God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Our preacher is here all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, the right reverend, Dr. Mark Moore Jr. of the Faith Covenant Church. Come on, give God praise for our preacher tonight. Amen, 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 amen. We're moving quickly, but I don't want to move without yielding to our moderator. If he would like to have words tonight, we want to yield the floor to him. Come on, everybody stand all over the place, amen, as we receive our moderator. I want to hear this preacher preach tonight. Thank you. I want to say the president is doing a fine job. Let's give him a big hand. Come on, you can do better than that. He's a great leader. He's a great visionary. Let's hear some word tonight. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for our moderator. Amen. It's giving time tonight. Clap your hands for giving. Come on, come on. We don't give to be seen, but we ought to be seen giving as giving is God's financial plan for the work of the local church. Thank you so much to all of our delegates. The count came in as far as our workshops. Amen. And uh, so far, we've had 118 delegates tonight. Amen. Amen. In our workshops. Amen. And we thank God for that. That's grateful. Monday. Amen. All right. And so we're thankful and we're grateful. All of our ministries who are serving. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate you. We're going to ask our finance team to come and assist us uh, at this time. Amen. If you are a part of Fellowship District and you have not registered, uh, look at your name and say, please register. Please register. Amen. We need you to do that. Amen. Because ministry costs money. Amen. Amen. And I've discovered, amen, in my short time of leading, amen, that if you're going to lead, it's going to cost you some money. Say amen. 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 And um, especially when you like things done a certain way. Say amen. Y'all say amen tonight. You're not saying amen. Amen. When you like things done a certain way, amen, you have to foot the bill sometime. Amen. 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 But we want to uh, make sure. Uh, that we're giving tonight. All of our pastors, would you stand tonight? I want to see you. I took my glasses off. I don't know why I did that. Amen. All of my pastors, I want you to stand. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all can do much better than that for our pastors tonight. Amen. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Amen. Pastors, listen, we have a preacher from out of town, and uh, we want to make sure that when he leaves Detroit, uh, that he doesn't feel mishandled by Detroit. Say amen. 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 I'm asking our pastors if you would help me uh, tonight and sow a $100 seed. That will be a blessing uh, to us tonight. I'm asking each and every one of you to sow a special seed of $20 at the bare minimum tonight. Amen. Because we need your help uh, in making sure that things go the way they need to go. Say amen. 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 Let's stand all over this place. Amen. With our gifts. Let's stand with our gifts. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are going to assist us tonight. Amen. And you're going to come around at their guidance. Amen. You can also give on Givelify. Just look up Fellowship District Baptist Association and you can give that way. Amen. All right. We want everybody to stand. If you have legs to stand, please stand. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. If you have legs, please stand. Amen. And the same aisle you come down is the same aisle you go back up to get back to your seat. Right before you come, I want everybody to shout it to the hilltop. Everybody shout, no lack. Come on, say it like you mean it. Shout, no lack. Not in my house or in this one. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on around with a smile on your face.
sure y'all giving 20s. I'm seeing a lot of dollars. Make sure I'm seeing a lot of dollars, and some of y'all got real good jobs. 20s. Listen, if you're trying to give, be a Giblify, look up Fellowship District Baptist Association in Jesus' name. Could you give God praise for all of our gifts tonight? Amen. Amen. We're moving quickly. Amen. Thank you all so much. We prayed at the beginning. You all clap your hands for our finance team. God bless you all. Amen. Our music ministry is coming back uh, to bless us, but after they have come, I'm grateful to bring to this preaching platform uh, for our opening night for TFC 2023, a man of God who does not need introduction, a faithful man, a powerful man, an anointed man, amen, the founder of the Young Leaders Conference, amen, worldwide, amen, amen, amen and the proud pastor of the Faith Covenant Church all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. After the choir has come, I'm sure you'll be on your feet, but after the choir has come, I want everyone to stand and give a big Ferndale, Royal Oak Township, Metropolitan Detroit welcome to Pastor Mark Moore, Jr. Clap your hands for the man of God tonight.
Jesus Christ and fill us forever. Would you lift up your voice and give praise in this place, everybody? Oh, come on, let me hear the sound of those that are glad that it's mercy. Didn't he end yesterday? Didn't he end last week? But it endures forever. Come on, somebody. You ought to clap your hands right there and just give him glory. Because his mercy endures forever. And if you believe it tonight and you're glad about it, lift up a sound all over this room that lets God know you appreciate the fact that he's rich in mercy. Come on, come on, come on. I know you had church yesterday. I know you got church tomorrow. But you woke up to new mercies today. I need somebody to give him a right now praise for right now mercies. Give him a right now praise for right now favor. Come on, just tell somebody real quick. We came to have church. Tell somebody, it's a neighbor. I'm only here because his mercy didn't run out on me. That's the wrong neighbor. Don't sit next to them tomorrow. Tell somebody, else, I'm only here because his mercy didn't run out. And for that reason, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, somebody tell me what happens. My soul cries out. I don't hear no souls crying out. I said my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Would you clap your hands and give him one more high praise in this place? I said a high praise. That's an applause. Open your mouth, sir. It's not a praise until you add your words with it. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise won't stay in my hands. It will continually be in my mouth. Lift up your voice. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Because I don't know if you know it or not, but there's a rumor going up and down Ithaca Avenue that the name of the Lord is still a strong tower. And the righteous run it and they say, make sure your neighbor got the right idea. Shout real loud. Tell me, what's his name tonight? Oh, if you know it for real, give him one more hand clap of praise, everybody. Hallelujah. We certainly honor the Lord tonight and we thank God for our a wonderful, wonderful choir that has blessed us uh, so richly. Can we thank God for the music ministry tonight? Amen. You all have ministered so powerfully, but we are certainly honored to be here. Uh, David declared it like this. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. But, but my testimony was a little bit different, similar but slightly different. Uh, when I got up today, I, I said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us get to the fellowship conference. Is anybody glad to be in TFC tonight? I need to know. Uh, I, need to, I need a little more help over there. Anybody glad to be here? We honor the Lord for this vision and for uh, this mandate and such a, such a powerful uh, opportunity for fellowship. And in order uh, to have fellowship, you got to get more than one fellow on the same ship. And so we honor the Lord for everybody that is somebody tonight. But certainly, I know that you all are going to help me honor the Lord for our host pastor and our conference president. Would y'all help me celebrate the right reverend, Dr. Jeremy? Mosley. Can y'all help me? Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Can y'all help me celebrate the president and the senior pastor here at New Mount Vernon? There you go. There you go. There you go. And listen, in order to fully appreciate him, please help me with this, Mike. We have to thank God for the one beside him in life and in ministry. Can we thank God for our first lady on tonight? Can we thank God for Lady Mosley? Amen, amen. We thank God for her. And certainly, certainly, certainly we have to celebrate uh, Reverend Ryan Pete Johnson, our moderator. Let, let's celebrate better than that. Y'all still ain't making enough noise for the moderator. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. And uh, to all of the pastors here uh, in this district, we honor and salute you. Such a joy to look out and see some family out there. Pastor Joe Henry uh, and his wife, Dr. Ray Lynn Henry and family. Thank God for you all being here tonight. Then I'm looking, I'm looking, uh, Mount Vernon, New Mount Vernon got these good lights, these rotisserie lights. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm not squinting because I'm deep. I'm squinting because I'm trying to see y'all. Amen. But I see Sister Shannon. Is that you back there? One of our members from our church in Atlanta. We thank God for you and for everybody uh, that is somebody. 
do, do me a favor. L look at someone that you haven't been talking about this week, at least, at least this week. Now, if you got to look too hard, you need to get saved for real. Come on. But find somebody you haven't been talking about. I don't want anyone to have an attitude. And just tell them, I'm so glad you sit next to me tonight. Come on, say it for real, from a real place. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Amen. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to shout together, you might as well smile together. If you're going to get delivered together, hallelujah, you might as well know who's going to celebrate breakthrough with you tonight. Amen. Pastor Presley, good to see you. My classmate back there, man, love you. One of our great pastors here in the city of Detroit, we honor you. And uh, everybody that is somebody, grab your Bibles uh, and meet me in uh, the gospel according to Luke. Uh, there's there's something that I want to lift. I've been uh, arrested by it, and I'm going to stay there. Always a joy uh, to have uh, Minister Josh Orr with us on the organ, and, and uh, always a joy. I look over and see uh, uh, one of Detroit's finest. He travels down uh, every month and plays for us uh, there at our studio. Uh, the Dr. Tony Stanford obeys. Always good to see Tony. Amen. Luke chapter number six. I want y'all to also, lastly, thank God for the production team that works so hard y'all help me thank God for them media and cameras and sound and light uh, the pandemic showed us who the real MVPs were oh come on here we learned how important that media team was when we didn't have no choice but to stream and uh, so we ought to thank God for them. Uh, I need the sound team to help me as much as you can. I've been preaching uh, nonstop since uh, I was in Detroit last Sunday and then uh, North Carolina Wednesday and Virginia Thursday and Los Angeles uh, Friday and Sacramento Saturday and flew all night to be back home for several services yesterday uh, here tonight. So I don't have but a fraction of a voice. So if you would uh, take some of that low end out for me and cut it up. If, if, if I break it, Pastor Mose got a lot of money, so he not even going. You see your shoes? He got a lot of money. He not even going to charge me. Amen. If you're in Luke chapter 6, shout at me and say, I'm there. If you're not there yet, say, wait on me, wait on me, wait on me. Wait on me. You're, we're there. I heard a consensus then. Since we're there, look at the uh, sixth verse of the sixth chapter uh, for the sake of, of clarity I, I'm, I'm going to lift it uh, if you'll allow me out of the New International Version uh, I like the way it reads there but whatever version you have if it's a Bible it'll work verse 6 Luke chapter 6 says these words it says and on another day he went into the synagogue on another Sabbath he went into the synagogue and was teaching and a man was there whose right hand was withered. May the Lord add a blessing. So the reading was word. While you're standing, while you're standing, while you're standing. I'm not going to work your heart tonight, but I want you to do this for me. Put your phone, your tablet, your Bible down just for a moment. And, and while you're standing, slide that hand in the hand of your neighbor. Slide that hand in the hand of your neighbor. I need to declare this to you now. Everything that happens after this moment hinges on what we do in this moment. Right now, I want you to begin to squeeze life into that hand. Begin to squeeze joy into that hand. Begin to squeeze peace into that hand. And I need to tell you something. Some of you are holding hands with people that don't look like what they've been through. And if, if, if I have a real church in Ferndale tonight, you ought to shout here. Some of y'all are holding hands with people that don't look like what they're going through right now. Hallelujah. They, they, they stood up during praise and worship. They sang with the choir. They clapped. They rocked. They gave an offering. But some of you are holding hands with people that have some issues with God tonight. Lord, if you don't move in this situation, I'm not going to make it. Lord, if you don't touch here, I'm not going to get out of this. Come on. That's why you're squeezing life into that hand. Because tonight in this fellowship meeting, we are reminded that one can chase a thousand. But two can put 10,000 to flight. I want you to get ready to pray because if we're not going to have fellowship, then we're guilty of false advertising tonight. And so I don't want you to pray for your money, for your job. We're getting better, sir. For your career, for your family. I want you to pray exclusively for the hand you're holding. 
So, preacher, I, I don't know the issue. I don't know what to pray for. I want you to pray that whatever you've asked God to do in your life, he does it in their life first. I feel the Holy Ghost. And on the count of three, I want you to let the sound in this sanctuary that lets every demon at home know, every demon at their church, every demon in their leadership, every demon in their mind, every demon trying to impact their health. I want you to pray until that demon gets off your road, gets out of your section, walks out this sanctuary. Come on, you ought to feel strength already. One, come on church. Pastors are getting ready to pray. Preachers are getting ready to pray. Worship leaders are getting ready to pray. Choir members are getting ready to pray. Musicians are getting ready to pray. And God is getting ready to respond. One, two, three, open your mouth. Come on. Come on, come on, pray church, pray church. Come on, pray church, pray church. Come on, pray church, pray church. Just a little more volume and I'll be all right. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Come on, somebody's ministry depends on your prayer tonight. Somebody's sanity depends on your prayer tonight. Somebody's strength depends on your prayer tonight. Yeah, yeah. Come on, 30 more seconds. This is the fellowship conference. Stand in the gap for somebody. Stand in the gap for somebody. Stand in the gap for somebody. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, don't get weary. They need your strength. Don't get weary. They need your strength right now. I need some praying over there. I don't need y'all looking. We got too many demons to fight to just look. Maybe I could have stayed at home on a Monday if I was just going to look. Open your mouth right now. Come on, there's something in the sanctuary. Pull on it, pull on it. Pull on it till healing touches somebody. Pull on it till the refreshing touches somebody's ministry. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that saving name, that healing name, that delivering name, that name that causes knees to bow and tongues to confess. Lord, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. Thank you for the day you've allowed us to see. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the fact that last night was not our last night. But now we ask that you throw your weight around in the place. He'll save and deliver. Bring high places down. Make crooked places straight. Throw your weight around in the room. Get the glory out of us. And Lord, do it not just for me tonight, but do it for the hand that I'm holding. I bind depression in their life. I lose joy. I bind sickness in their life. And I lose healing. I bind weakness in their life. And I lose the strength of heaven. And it is so. It is so. It is so. And it's so right now. Now loose that hand and give it glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I said, loose the hand and give him glory. I said, loose the hand and give him glory. And give him glory. And give him glory. Ooh, na, 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 na. Oh, yeah. Now, before you sit down, just look up and down your row and declare it with power. And if they don't respond, get your iPad and go sit somewhere else. Look at your row and say, miracles, signs, wonders right now. Tell the other side, make sure you got surround sound. Say miracles, signs, wonders right now. I'm gonna give you one more chance to let your faith testify. Tell yourself this time, say miracles, signs, wonders, right now. So don't wait till the battle's over. Hey! God bless.
bless you. Be seated. I don't have a lot of voice to play with y'all. <laughs> I feel like shouting right now, but y'all ain't come to have no church, so. Ah. Hallelujah. Just, just. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, 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 hey. I, I, I got to move, y'all. I, I really do. But I need you, if you've got the Holy Ghost, prophesy to somebody and just tell them these words. And if they don't shout, don't talk to them for the rest of the week. Look at somebody and just say, neighbor. I have enough faith to believe that while we worship in his house, he working in your house. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him. Tell somebody while we're praising in his house, he's performing in our house right now. I said, right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh, right now, oh, right now. Yeah. God bless you. Be seated in the meal. You may return to your seated place. <laughs> right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. That's why I'm not going to wait to praise him. Because I, I believe he's not going to wait to turn it. So why would I wait to praise him? If he not going to wait to heal me, why would I wait to praise him? If he not going to wait to bless me, why would I wait to shout about it? Whoa. All right, I'm sorry. I, I want to preach. Let me preach for just a few moments. Let me preach for just a few moments tonight. Uh, so simply from the subject, from the thought. <clears throat> from the idea, <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Who told you God can't do it for you on a Monday night? Who told you? Who told you God couldn't do it? I wanna preach. I wanna preach for just a few moments. Don't, don't shout like that. Let somebody get delivered real quick. But I wanna preach and I trust that you'll help me. Uh, simply from the subject, if, if you'll help me, let's start working together now. Uh, tell, tell someone else next to you, if you don't mind talking to your neighbor at the fellowship conference, just tell them these words. Say, neighbor, get a grip. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're going to see if that's the right neighbor. Just make sure you got a backup. Talk to somebody on the other side and tell them the same thing. Say, neighbor, get a grip. I, I, uh, I'm trying, man of God, I'm trying, I'm sure trying. But I remember growing up as, uh, as a young man uh, in uh, the early 90s, I'm just in my mid-30s, and I remember growing up uh, in the early 90s before we had PlayStation 5s and before uh, we had Xboxes and before we had iPhones. Uh, I remember that my brother and I, we used to play, and I'm going to see if I got anybody in here that understands uh, grew up like I did. We, we used to play with these things called action figures. Yeah, this, this was some, some of the younger kids looking very confused. What's that? Do, get on Google. You got a phone. Get on Google and, and look it up. This was back when we used to do this weird thing called playing outside. Tag. Red light, green light. Y'all don't? Okay. Yeah, but we, we used to play outside and uh, we, we played with action figures and we would compare uh, our, our collections with friends and with neighbors. But uh, one of the most uh, popular brands of action figure uh, that we had, I'm going to see if you grew up like I did, they were called G.I. Okay, yeah, we grew up together and didn't even know it. Look at that. Yeah, G.I. Joes were a status symbol. Uh, at a certain point and everybody wanted to collect uh, as many as you could. You wanted to get ones that were uh, a reflection of your interest and your uh, likes. But I remember that one of the most popular G.I. Joes uh, that all the boys wanted was the one that came with something called a Kung Fu grip. I got some witnesses in here. That, 
that, that, that was the one. If you, if you had the G.I. Joe uh, with the Kung Fu grip, you, you were somebody in the kingdom. Yeah, you, you were somebody on the playground. And uh, the reason for that is because the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip enabled you to switch weapons in and out of his hand. Uh, that the kung fu grip that he came with was such a prize because you could you could alternate tools and instruments because here it is the grip allowed whatever you put in his hand it allowed him to hold on to it and, and, and I really think that that the reason the Lord would not let me preach anything else tonight at the fellowship conference is because there are some leaders, there are some preachers, there are some singers, there are just some saints in this room that are frustrated on the inside because it seems like you're having a hard time holding on to what God has put in your hand. There, there's some of you in here now, you've had joy, but you couldn't hold on to it. You, you've had, some of you have had peace at a certain point in your life, career, ministry, or scholastic journey, but it seems that you have not been able to hold on to it. Some of you, you you've had money. It's not that you don't make money. Some of y'all make good money. You just can't hold on to it because you have lost your grip. But I, I need you to, to don't just say it. Don't just talk. We, we've got the Holy Ghost over here. So prophesy it one more time to somebody and just tell them it this way. Say, God's given you your grip back. Tell them, tell them. Hallelujah. I feel that all in my spirit. Y'all excuse me. But, but this is what leads me uh, to find the words of Luke here in this book that bears his name so interesting when he paints a picture of a particular Sabbath morning late in the spring of A.D. 29 where Jesus is in this synagogue in Capernaum. And he's, he's there in Capernaum and, and it was the custom on the Sabbath in this day that whoever gave the last lesson or what we would call the sermon they would stand and they would they would read two or three verses from the prophets and then lecture or comment on them but this particular day while Jesus is in the synagogue the Bible says that there's an interesting man in church that day there there's a man that the Bible says has a withered hand that that's what that's what that's what the other synoptic gospel writers refer to it as they call it in Matthew a withered hand he calls it in Mark Mark calls it a withered hand, but I'm interested in Luke's account because unlike Matthew, unlike Mark, Luke is a physician by trade. Luke is a physician. He's an MD, if you will, and, and because of his professional lens, he, he describes it and diagnoses his condition with a little more detail. He does not simply say that it is a withered hand, but Luke tells us that it is a withered right hand. It is it is, it is, it is a withered right hand. And I, I think that it would be easy for us to gloss over this because uh, we don't see much significance there. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll understand that the right hand all throughout Scripture is symbolic and significant for it is the right hand that is the hand of blessing. It is, it is the right hand that is the hand of influence. And I think most fittingly for tonight, it is the right hand that is the hand of fellowship. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, if you look all throughout scripture in Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 6, the word says, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Let the whole church shout power. The right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Psalms 16 and 11 picks it up and declares, I have sent the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Another hymn writer picks it up in the 110th Psalm and says, The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. The whole church saint right hand. To jump over to the New Testament. It is in 1 Peter 3 and 22. It tells us that when the Lord ascended and took that cloud chariot back to glory, it tells us that he who has gone into heaven is now on the right hand of God. And so we glean and learn then, brothers and sisters, that the right hand is a symbol of power. The right hand is symbolic of authority. The right hand is symbolic of strength, might, and also fellowship. 
This is why it is so problematic that this man is sitting here with his right hand paralyzed. This man is without strength. He is without might. He is without power. He has no authority. And from this standpoint, this man is utterly, completely, and totally disabled. Not only is he missing his strength and authority and influence, but he is also unable to fight properly. For I understand that in this season, in this era, in this time, there was no modern warfare. He had to choose between holding a shield or holding a sword. I'm, I'm talking to some of you all in here that have felt you've got a color purple anointing on your life right now because your testimony is all my life I had to fight out. Yeah, Y'all not going to help me in here. And there's some of you all that have been on the defensive for so long. Some of you have come to church Sunday after Sunday. And every Sunday, you're on the defense. Every, every service, you're on the defense because you're trying to weather the storms and, and weather attacks from people that God called you to serve that don't even like you. Y'all not talking to me in here. And if the truth be told, you don't like them either. Uh, don't look around. Don't. Don't look around. I don't know who you sit next to, who watching on the live stream. Just, just smile. Blink twice if I'm telling the truth. Can I get a witness in here? But, but this man here, the Bible says, is dealing with a right hand issue. His, his strength, his authority, his influence, his power. The Bible says that the right hand, I love the word that Luke uses, it is withered. It is, it is withered. I like withered because withered implies a timeline. Withered withered is not a word that speaks to a sudden transformation it does not say that his hand was crushed it does not say that his hand was cut off it says that his right hand has withered and that tells us that there is a degenerative process at work and over time his condition has gone from bad to worse I'm, I'm, I'm talking to some people in here right now and your spirit is starting Starting to leap. Some of y'all are pushing tears back in your tear ducts because you don't want to cry in front of all these people in this service tonight, but you know good and well that you have some withered areas in your life. Wish I had a talk back church in Ferndale. You, 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 you've got a testimony where it seems that you started in ministry with a certain momentum and energy and gusto and vigor. And the wind was in your sails. But it seems that your support over time has withered. It seems that the giving has withered. It seems that your money is withering. It seems that your influence is withering. It seems for some of you that the strength and the weight of your voice is withering and, and you some of y'all you're testifying in your spirit right now and you're saying God I wish if you was going to do it you would have just took it all at once but I got to deal with the pain of looking back on where I was and looking at where I am and being left with the conclusion that my life seems to be withering right where I stand but I came on an assignment all the way from Atlanta, Georgia today to tell somebody that the good news in the midst of the bad news and I'm going to see who shouts because 10 of y'all need to the good news is trouble don't last always I, oh yes, so I don't. I don't need you to be selfish with that word. I need you. I need you to tell that person next to you. Tell them real quick. Say, neighbor, it doesn't matter what the trouble is. Tell them it can't last always. Tell them. Tell, tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they look good. Their shoes match their purse. But but speak to that issue on the inside and tell them that thing that you've been crying about that we don't know about. Tell them. Say, God is God enough to handle that too. And trouble don't last always. It don't. It don't last always. At your church, it don't last always. With your children, it don't last always. In your body, it can't last always. In your mind, it can't last always. At Comerica Bank, tell the atmosphere real loud. Say, it can't last always. Why? Because I got a promise that weeping may endure for a night, but only one night, though. Only. 
Mm. Joy is coming in the morning. Clap your hands real loud and tell your neighborhood real quick. Say, neighbor, it can't last all ways. It can't. It can't last. He, he has. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. This time, say it with passion. I got to go, but say it with passion. Tell somebody again. Say, neighbor, not only won't it last always. Not only can it not last always, but tell them I believe it's ending right now. Huh? Mm, I wish I had some right now folk in here. I, I believe that while, while we're in this week of fellowship conference, I believe that there are some things that are getting ready to turn around because we have the strength to trust God. I, I believe and I believe and I believe and I, I gotta hear it let you go here but he's dealing with something that he's been facing for a long time this uh, this withering has taken place over over years it has infected or impacted rather every area of his hand most scholars suggest that because the hand has withered and been inactive that the arm the right arm as well has begun to lose mass because of atrophy he has not used it for a the tendons and the nerves have from inactivity and lack of use but here's what makes me shout I'm going to see if anybody else want to get happy with me tonight if you look at verse 6 it tells us something that we have to look close to see it tells us catch me that even with his issue even with his withered hand even with his condition let me see who shouts with me the good news is he still has enough sense to come to church he Mm. He, he's still y'all y'all didn't hear what I said he, he's still issue and all uh, says I'm still coming to church can I talk to the fellowship conference and tell you that one of the problems that we're facing and fighting in this day and age of church and ministry is we have a people that have been so conditioned to looking out for themselves first uh, that the moment they have an issue uh, in their life they stop coming in the God's house y'all not going to say nothing to me in here but I'm going to talk like I hear it tonight the issue that some of us have is that when things don't go the way we want them to go we stop coming to the one place that has the power to change the issue that we're complaining about but I'm here to tell some people that have some real issues some people that are not too bougie not too stuck up not too grand not too arrogant to tell the truth tonight I'm here to tell you that in spite of your issue, don't you let nobody stop you from coming to church. I need you to tell somebody next to you because they, they'll hear you more than they'll hear me. Tell them, say, neighbor, whatever you do, tell them, say, don't stop serving. I, I know you've got some issues, but tell them, say, don't stop serving. I, I know they might not put your name in lights, but tell them, don't stop serving. I, I know, I know they might not call you out and give you a parking spot and, and put your name in the program, but, but tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't stop serving. In fact, if you're really want to tell the truth tell somebody say neighbor in spite of how you treat me I'm still coming to church if they don't speak with their ugly self I'm still coming to church if you walk past me like you don't see me knowing I gave you gas money three weeks ago I'm still coming to, I shall let nothing separate me from the love of God why preacher because uh, please cut these monitors up uh, because I understand clearly that if I could just get in the presence of the Lord uh, his presence uh, is greater than my problems uh, I wonder who can live uh, or look back over your life and testify that you've lived long enough to know uh, that there were times uh, when your problems had a voice uh, and they talked to you the whole way to church uh, talk Told you to go home. Told you resign from that ministry. Told you leave that church. Told you forget those people. But the moment you stepped in the sanctuary, as soon as your foot struck Zion, you said, "I will enter His gates." 
sing with thanksgiving and I'll come into his courts I just wonder if there's anybody in here that brought a Monday night shout tonight for no other reason than the fact that God's about to work some stuff out for you for no other reason than the fact you came to church I wish you would open your mouth and just give God glory right there because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says in verse number 7 then that there are Pharisees I got to hurry that are in the sanctuary and they're looking for a reason to accuse Jesus they're looking for a reason to trap him and they want to know if he's going to heal on the Sabbath day they, they want to know if he's going to deliver on the Sabbath day. But I like this because verse 8 tells us that Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew what they were thinking. And that's good news because there are some of you that need to understand. I know you're not going to like this, but there are some people that don't want you to get healed because your healing is not convenient for their timeline. Y'all not going to talk to me, but I got to tell you, there are some people that don't want you to get healed right now because they benefit from a broken version of you. Ah, I wish I had a real church. They, they benefit from a you that needs them because uh, there are some people that are so delusional in their mind uh, that they need to be needed. Ah, but I'm here to tell somebody that what Jesus does is he tells the man, I want you to get up and stand in front of everybody because what you got to understand is that we have lost a lot of people in our modern church because we wanted them to be what we wanted them to be on our timeline and on our terms it's a whole lot of folks that have been lost because we tried to clean them before we called them Look at y'all getting quiet in here right now. We we have our rules, but we don't have real relationship. Uh, but I like the fact that Jesus says that even though it's the Sabbath day, and you all don't think that I should do it on today, he says I'm going to still stand him up in front of everybody, and I'm going to do it in spite of your objections, and I. Want I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, is there anybody in here tonight that can just give God a quick praise tonight because his grace is louder than your enemy's objections. And what I've got to tell somebody before we get out of here tonight, we got dinner at five and then the program's in the evening and then service is at eight tomorrow. But before I let you go tonight, I know need you just to look at somebody and say neighbor 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 uh, tell them I've got a word from the Lord for you <laughs> and tell them the word of the Lord is <laughs> that God is getting ready <laughs> to bless you off schedule you ain't got the right name I said turn around and tell somebody St. God is getting ready to bless you off schedule it's not even your season to get what God's about to give you but just because folks don't want you to have it God says I'm going to do it just we got to go home now but can I get somebody that will give God praise? Because God's getting ready to give you a blessing that's not on schedule. You ought to look at other folk that have had to wait years to get in. But God says, I'm going to do it right now. There were some of y'all that know people that have been in your industry and it took years to get where they are. But God said I am going to do it for you right now why don't you give God right now praise for right now blessing what does e flex sound like in further oh yeah I need somebody to help me now because in verse number 8 now he says to the man with the withered hand I want you to stand there in front of everybody 
Do you mind helping me preach tonight? Run up here and help me real quick. Because Jesus, he looks at the man who's got the withered right hand. And he's been hiding over in the wings. But Jesus says, I want you to come out in front of everybody. And I want to tell somebody that your next miracle is going to require you to risk embarrassment. Your next miracle is going to require you to step out on faith even when it don't make sense. I wish I had somebody. I didn't tell you to leave. Where you going? That's what's wrong with some of us. We leave before God's done. But tell me your neighbor until I get what I need. I'm going to stand just like a tree by the rivers of water. You only come to have no church. Y'all ain't come to have no church. Y'all ain't come to have no church. Y'all ain't come to have no church. But is any anybody maybe watching on live stream? That's not alone. Not alone. Not alone. Get some hand sanitizer and rub it in real good. And why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Y'all ain't preaching with me. I said, say, neighbor, stand right there. And he's standing there with his withered right hand. But here's what blesses me. Jesus looks at the man and tells him to do something he's been unable to do. And I came to Detroit tonight to tell you that there's some leaders here. And the Lord is getting ready to ask you to do something you've been unable to do. He's asking you to do some work in your community you've been unable to do. He's asking you to do some work with the next generation you've been unable to do. But tell your neighbor it's been impossible before but all say all all I need is a word from the Lord and the Lord says I want you to do one thing he says that right hand that's been withered up and dried up he said here's your word stretch I wish I had a church y'all didn't hear me we got to rewind he said the one thing I, 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 I want you to do is stretch. I wish I had a whole church that would grab that word and prophetically now, right where you stand, just stretch. Stretch your faith. Stretch. Stretch your reading. Stretch. Stretch your confidence. Because all you need is one word to do the impossible. Is it anybody that's got that word tonight? Tell your neighbor I got a word that I'm stretching on. What's your word, church? Be not weary in well-doing. In due season, you're going to reap. I got one word I'm stretching on with pain in my body. What's your word? He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity. Chastisement of peace was upon him, but when his stripes I'm healed, I got to let y'all go. Y'all ain't happy tonight. But he tells him, he says, stretch. And in order to stretch, his hands been withered. In order.
order to stretch look at what God does in order to stretch God had to go beneath the surface because when he stretched it wasn't the outside but the bones had to receive strength and one word the nerves reactivated and one word the muscles relaxed and one word the tendons got their elasticity tell your name your next miracle is not on the surface but say God is going under the surface he's going not in the pulpit but in your marriage he's going to heal not your outside but your mind he's going to deliver yeah on the inside you want to shout tonight because God said not only will you look alone you go be alone not only will you look healthy you will be healthy and I wish I had somebody in the house tonight that would take your hand and stretch because the Lord said what took time to wither what took time to break what took time to denigrate God healed it immediately 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 and I came to prophesy and tell you I don't care how long you've been down God said right now I'm restoring in your church and I came to tell a hundred shouters that would give God glory that God said I'm getting ready to give you your grip back touch three people and say neighbor get a grip on your mind you're not going crazy get a grip on your family your child will be safe get a grip on your money you will prosper y'all ain't talking tell somebody get a grip get a grip get a grip get a grip I wish I had a church that would take your right hand and grab somebody by their right hand and just shake them now I said shake them this is a Baptist church shake them and rock them rock them and shake them and say neighbor this same hand that was withered God's going to use it to sign deals this year the same hand I'm shaking the wind God is going to use it to shake up Detroit the same hand I'm shaking the night God's going to use it to lay hands on the sick and they will recover the same hand I'm going to the enemy's camp Taking, 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 taking what belongs to me. I wish I had a praiser that would give him glory. I wish I had a sound that would give him glory. Tell one more name. Do you know why your hand is so strong? Tell him it's holding. Because I made a decision that I'm going to hold to his hand. I said, God's unchanging hand. You better hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Y'all ought to build your homes on things that turn. Tell your neighbor, you ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Tell three people.
people get a grip. I said, tell three people, God's giving you your grip back. Prophesy and tell them, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Because God is giving your grip back. You're going to hold on to the favor you get. You're going to hold on to the joy you get. No more temporary wins. No more temporary favor. You go hold on because God is giving you your grip back. Shout for it. 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 Let everything that has their grip, let every church that's got their grip, let every family that's got their grip, shout. Just have by somebody with your right hand and say, I got it back. Bless you. I got it back. 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 Say Praise God like you got your grip back. God 
won't let everybody testify just say you're not in this thing alone you can make it clap your hands like you believe it tonight You would praise him like you got your grip tonight. Y'all don't shout over here. Everybody give him praise. Everybody give him praise. Everybody give him praise. Everybody give him praise. Some change in hand. You want to hold God. You want to build your whole soul. Things eternal. Everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging. You better hold, you better hold, you better hold, you better hold, don't get weary, you better hold, don't let go, you better hold, everybody clap your hands. your grip back, open your mouth and shout right now. I wish I had some folk that would shout like God can go back to you. Without the organ, without the drums, I just want to hear the sound of those that have their grit back. I need to hear you, I need to hear you, I need to hear you. As long as you've been dealing with withered situations, you ought to shout better than that when God's given you your grit back. Open your mouth. The Lord said to tell you, we're standing. We end the same way we started. We end the same way we started. Put your hand in the hand of the person standing beside you. When you did this 30 minutes ago, while you couldn't see it on the outside, some of you were holding a withered hand. But hallelujah, but right where you stand, I want you just to squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, and tell them to neighbor, I'm not withered no more. I'm not. You know what I was, but do you see what I am? I'm not withered no more. I, I got my strength back. I got my authority back. I got my power back. Oh, I got my joy back. I got it back. And this time, the Holy Ghost said for the shouters, I'm a hold on. To it. I'm a hold on. I'm a hold on. I'm a hold on. You, the devil's not gonna take it from you this time. You go hold on. Yeah. Squeeze that hand. We're gonna pray. 
the Lord says that that information was good, but that's not really where you ought to shout. I said, all right, Lord, well, where do they shout? He said, look at it again. Verse 6, Jesus goes into the synagogue. There's a man with a withered hand. Verse 7, Pharisees don't want him to heal him. Verse 8, Jesus tells him, stand in front of everybody. Verse 9, he says, am I not Lord of the Sabbath? Verse 10, he says, stretch out your hand, and his hand was restored. I said, all right, Lord, what I miss? He said, look at it again. Verse 6, he's in church. There's a man with a withered hand. Verse 7, Pharisees don't want him to get healed. Verse 8, he says, stand up in front of everybody. Verse 9, he says, am I Lord of the Sabbath? Verse 10, he says, stretch out your hand. His hand is restored. That's a lot of good stuff to shout about. He said, no, that ain't what y'all shout about. Well, Lord, what is it? Look again. Verse 6, he goes to church as a man with a withered hand. Verse 7, the Pharisees don't want him to heal him. Verse 8, he says, stand in front of everybody. Verse 9, he says, am I not Lord of the, of the Sabbath? Verse 10, he says, stretch out your hand. His hand's completely restored. So, if they don't shout off that, what do they shout about? And the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord said, he said, ask y'all, who does the talking in all these verses? I'm looking. I said, well, Lord, you, you did all the talking. He said, that's why they ought to shout. I said, what do you mean? Let's see if you catch it. He said, because nowhere in the story did the man even have to ask to be healed. Here's where you shout. God says, I'm about to do some stuff you ain't even asked for just because you showed up. I'm going back to the hotel. T -t Tell somebody, just because you showed up tonight, God's going to do some stuff you ain't even had to ask for. You know what that sounds like? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can even ask. Squeeze that hand and say, he's going to do some stuff you ain't even asked for. You ain't even asked him to turn that thing around yet. But because you showed up, God said, right place, right time. You ain't even got to ask. All you got to do is receive it. We gotta pray you're holding that hand. Oh, you're holding that hand. You're holding that hand. You're holding that hand. I want you, I'm out of time. I don't wanna mess up because I don't wanna be uninvited. But I want you to pray for just 30 more seconds in just a moment. Because the person you're holding hands with, God's about to give them their grit back. They've been without power, without strength, without influence. And some of you, you've lost the grip on your mind. You, you, you're up to date, down tonight. Some of you, ministry has stolen your grip on your family. Your kids don't even like church. And you're trying to figure out where I've gone wrong. You've, you've lost your grip. Some of you, you've lost your grip on your marriage. Y'all look good together on Instagram. Y'all match on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday is hell at the house. You've lost your grip. You've, you've lost your grip. But God says, I don't care. Catch this. I don't care how long it's been withered. I'm about to restore it back instantly. Across town, the Winans wrote a song that said, Restoration has finally come. I've been restored back to my place in God. And all over this room, on the count of three, we're getting ready to pray. I'm turning this service over. This prayer, listen to me. It's not about houses. This one's not about cars. This one's not about checks in the mail. This one's not about bigger churches and more members and more money. Nothing wrong with any of that, but guess what? If the Lord will make you whole, you can go get a car. Can I say something? You don't need a miracle to get a car. Pay your bills on time and get your credit right. 
and you can go get it. In fact, come down to Atlanta. You don't even need good credit. We got radios, commercials. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, don't sweat it. Everybody rides. We're not going to waste the power of prayer on material things tonight. This prayer is about one thing, restoration, wholeness. That's what the grip represents. It, rep it says it was made whole like the other one. God's about to restore what you lost. On the count of three, I want you to open your mouth. And I want you to begin to pray for that hand. One, I don't need spec. Hey, we've been here too long tonight. But just spectators, you know what your neighbor look like. Let's go to God. One, two, three. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Pray, 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 pray. Come on. Pray for that restoration. Pray for that restoration. Pray for the restoration. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Come on, come on out, out of the outer court. Come out of the outer court. Come out of the outer court. Come out of the outer court. Pray from a deeper place. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Father, seal it. Seal it now, God. Show us that we've heard you. Show us we didn't miss. Do it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to make one more appeal for maybe one more person that needs to come to the altar. I, I, it's a, it's a, this is the a fellowship conference, of course. So there are a lot of ministries represented tonight. Am I right? A lot of churches. I, I, I'm, I, I can't leave without encouraging somebody. I want you to say it again. This time you say it. Restoration is here. I took over uh, my home church six months ago. Six months ago. And after 26 years, I took over our church. Uh, God promoted my, my parents. I'm a PK. And so I want to rebuke whoever lied on us and said PKs are the worst ones. That's a lie. Everything bad I learned, I learned from the deacon's kids. It's them deacons kids you gotta watch them the ones some of y'all got a whole lot of testimonies but stay in the spirit but PK I took over my parents church God promoted them and blessed them to lead an exciting historic church in the city of Chicago <clears throat> and I stepped in the church had 60 members and in the last six months We've gone from 60 members to 548 members in six months. Six months. Uh, yesterday we had a record attendance. We opened up our second location. And all this has happened in the last six months. We went from one church in one location to one church in two locations on two separate sides of town. And yesterday, between the two locations, it's a record for us. I know y'all do this all the time. We had 570 people in church. Yeah. Now, here's why I'm telling you this. I had to change my flight this morning to get here. I had to change to the last flight that would get me here in time for church because we had a meeting with investors this morning because we need a new church. The church got so bad. I was telling pastor in the office yesterday, we had people that came to church brought a lunch, sat in the parking lot and watched on the live stream because they couldn't get in the building. Right? We need a new church. And so I told the Lord that everywhere I go in this season, because I believe for a miracle, I told him everywhere I go, I would encourage whoever wants to hear it, that it's not too late, you're not too far gone, and restoration can happen immediately. So here, here's, here, here's, here's what, hallelujah. Here's what I have to do, and I'm getting out of here. I'm going to challenge your faith. And I'm going to challenge your faith in the form of a praise. I want everybody in this room that believes that the grace for a right now turnaround. Yeah. 
I know this is crazy. I know this is different, but I'm believing God. I need everybody that believes it. I need you to do one thing. I need you to turn around one time right where you are. I feel the Holy Ghost. Now, I need you to prophesy, and I'm turning the mic up. Hallelujah. I need you to say, now, no, 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 don't just say it. I need you to declare it. Did you hear me? Don't just say it. I need you to decree it. Look at whoever's close to you and tell them, say, neighbor, just as fast as you turn, that's how fast God's about to turn it around. I dare you to praise him for it. I, I dare you to bless. Hey, 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 hey. Dare you to believe that God's about to do it for your ministry? I dare you to believe that God's about to open doors for you. If you got the faith, just turn around one more time and tell the devil that one's for my family. Turn around one more time and say that one's for my church. Turn around one more time and say that one's for my money. Turn around one more time and say that's for my family. If you believe it tonight, give God one more praise. Because every time I turn around, he keeps on. Yeah. Somebody give him praise right now. Shout to your car. Everybody give God praise. Come on, give them a dance on your way out. Oh, praise them. See y'all tomorrow night. See y'all tomorrow night. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow night. Pastor C.J. Sampson will be preaching. Bishop Edgar Van will be here tomorrow night. Don't feel no waste time. I come too far from where I started from, Lord. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. He ain't gonna 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 leave. He ain't gonna leave me. Oh yeah. 